Hi guys, Danny here from Daniel Ackley Photography and this video is 12 tips to get you started with mobile phone photography. So what is smartphone photography? Well, it's essentially taking photographs with your phone. It could be an iPhone or an Android, one of these, or rather than taking photographs with one of these bad boys. Although what's going to be interesting about it is most of these tips you can use, you know, either using your phone or a camera. Um, so that's cool. So, but, but essentially what you've got in your pocket with one of these mobile phones is a very powerful creative device. And it also means you've got a camera with you at all times, which is insane to me because when I was a kid, that was, the idea of that being a reality is, is, would blow my mind, but that's the reality we live in now. So, um, so what does that mean? Well, it basically means that you have got the ability to be creative where, wherever and wherever you are with a camera, which you now have in your pocket at all times. So it goes as a, as a famous saying, it says uh, the best camera is the one you have in your hands. So, if you, uh, if you enjoy taking photographs and you want to get into photography, then you've got no reason to not do it if you've got a phone old or new that's got a camera on it. Happy days. So, so what are we talking about with photography? So whether you use one of these bad boys, boom, or you use a phone, all photography is essentially about framing and post-processing. So, um, you know, that's in sort of very layman's terms, if you like. So these 12 tips really uh, are going to help you get started uh, using your phone um, to take photographs and then if you you know if you decide to really get into it you can progress and get one of these bad boy cameras so some of this stuff's going to seem pretty simple but you know it's really helpful uh, and I you know I it's stuff that I still do today so what's the first tip <laughs> this is quite funny so the first one is get yourself a little microfiber cloth a couple of quid on Amazon or wherever you like there are other other places you can buy them from of course and give your little lens a clean you know why sits in your pocket gets smudgy gets dirty the last thing you want to do is look back in your photos and, and it looks horrible and out of focus because you, you didn't clean your lens get one of these stick it in your pocket i have these on me at all times which i guess is a little bit sad but i am a professional photographer so these are very helpful for me cut the quid get them on amazon you can get them on lots of other different places but yeah well worth your money for, for the money well worth the money for what they actually do so number two tip number two your camera needs light to see just like we do just like we need light to be able to see what's around us a camera needs to see uh, light to be able to take a photograph the thing is some cameras especially with mobile phone cameras is that some are better than others um so what you really need to do is get used to seeing light in different places get your camera out play around with it see what's see what it's good at and what it's not so good at um you know some cameras are quite on, on mobile phones are much better than others when it comes to light so um play around with it see what it does you know um just, just get an idea of what good light is and what what isn't for good light you'll already notice yourself from taking snaps um you know of your friends or your family or your pets or hanging out in your garden all that kind of thing that you know big bits of bright sunlight can be really hard to take photographs in because it's very direct you have to wash the pit you know wash the picture out with too much light and at the same time you know when you're trying to take pictures of the shadow for example photo can look not so good because it's having to compensate for a lot of the fact that there isn't a lot of light there so just play around with it get used to seeing light and all that kind of thing and that's going to help you take better photographs and a little tip here especially if you're taking pictures of people and you'll notice this yourself if they're if the light's behind them and you take a picture from the front they might look like they're very underexposed or dark and the pictures behind them is bright so just try turning them a little bit turn them into the light a bit more you know um you know that's where you want to play around if you in fact if you take someone someone you know just put them in different bits of light take a photograph and see what how different the picture looks you'll start to begin to see what how light can really affect the way your photograph looks and this leads me to point number three which is take loads of photographs you you can on a phone and you can on, on on these on these cameras as well because we don't have film anymore where you only can do 24 pictures before you have to go and get them developed you can shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and the good thing about that is it means that you can experiment and learn you can play around you can try all kinds of different things out it doesn't matter because all right you might end up having to delete um you know just takes up all your memory but you could take hundreds sometimes thousands of pictures before you need to worry about that and that that never used to happen back in the day uh, you know, you, it, it was very difficult, but now you can just play around. So the good thing about that is, is you can just keep shooting, you can try different things, you can do all kinds of different things uh, and just keep shooting and, and look at all the different images and try and figure out which one's the best. And when you're learning, that's going to be really good for you because it's going to help you see what isn't and what is good. Um, and you don't have to worry about having to spend all this money getting film developed. All good. Now, tip number four, get to know your shooting mode. So 
when you've got a phone camera, uh, you've got all kinds of inbuilt modes, uh, and and you'll see them when you go for your menus. And uh, some of them are gonna, some of you know, there'll be an auto mode, which isn't always that good. But you know, if you just want to start taking photographs without having to think too much, then auto's perfectly fine. If that's what you want to do, absolutely brilliant. If you're doing pictures of people, you might find that there's a portrait mode, for example, which might be a little silhouette of a person, um, or a landscape mode, which might be some little mountains or something, and, or an action mode, for example, which uh, might be a sports, might have a sports thing or something like that. All these things do different things with your camera that allow you to make it a bit easier for you to capture these things that you're trying to cap that you're trying to photograph. For example, the portrait mode is going to be good for taking pictures of people. Um, it's going to do a couple of different things that are going to be different to your landscape mode, for example, because you're photographing different things and your camera needs to do different things. Um, and there's nothing wrong with using these different modes um, when you first start out. It's about using the tools that are there available to you. And your camera's got these things built in. It can help you learn before you start shooting things manually. At this stage, you're just going to be picking up your camera, trying to get used to using it. And I think it's actually, you know, better to be creative and let the camera make some decisions for you in the early days. And then you can learn to do the stuff, make these decisions for the camera yourself as you get better and you start to learn the technical things. So, yeah, learn your different shooting modes, learn what they do, learn how to embrace them, and don't be afraid to try them because you know it's all good fun. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter how many pictures you take, just do it. It's all good. Now, tip number five: editing. Well, this is quite an important one, but the good thing about technology is we've got loads of free editing apps you can use. I like Instagram and Snapseed, which is a favorite one for me. Um, if you go onto the Play Store um, or the Apple Store, you'll find loads of free downloadable apps. You can do all kinds of different editing things with your, with your, with your pictures. You can add things, you can take things out. Um, you know, how far you want to go with that is entirely up to you. But get used to using them because as you get better at photography, if you do start to get really into photography, then you'll start to use what are called professional editing, editing apps, but at least you'll know your way around them or have an idea of what they do by playing around with some of these free ones. And they can be fun as well, you know? So just get yourself one of those um, free editing apps, have a play with them and start messing around with your photos and see what kind of things you can come up with. It can be really creative with editing uh, and it can be great fun. So happy days. Now, tip number six, Zooms. Now, zoom on a smartphone is not that good because you don't have an optical zoom lens. You just have this lens and it's all done electronically. So um, what you're essentially doing is you're cropping in and blowing up the same image. So when you zoom into a picture, it doesn't look very good. So I will say try not to use the zoom unless you really have to. And my best tip with photography is the best zoom is your feet. Get closer <laughs> or step away. Use your feet as a zoom. That's the best thing to do. That way you don't have to compromise the quality of your image by zooming in and out, by pinching it and pushing it and all that kind of stuff for your phone. Don't worry about that. Just get closer or get further away. All good. Tip number seven, flash. Now the flash on your camera, they're not that great. If you really, really need to use it because it's dark or you're trying to do something creative, then absolutely brilliant. That's absolutely fine. But unless you need to, don't use it. It's very direct. It's not. It's hard to control it. It's not very good. It will. It will quite often just blow your pictures out and you'll and stress you out. So unless you really need to use your flash, on the, don't use your flash. We can worry about flash as you get better at photography and start picking up cameras and all that kind of stuff. So, which actually leads me to another another point, which is number eight, which is be patient. Be patient. When you first start taking photographs, just take your time. There's no rush. You're just beginning to develop basic skills and you're trying to have some fun. So. Don't worry about it, don't stress yourself out, just enjoy it, get your phone out, just play around, it's all good. And one little tip with being patient is to try and have a steady hand. There's nothing worse than trying to take pictures and you're, uh, because you're rushing and you're worried and you want to get a picture really quick. Just relax, bring your phone out, find the scene, take your picture, boom, happy days, it's all good. Don't stress, don't rush. So number nine, focus. So make sure you're focusing on what you want to capture using the touch screen. So quite often you will, you'll get your frame up and sometimes it won't look like it's in focus, you can't quite. But the thing about smartphones is, you just have to point them at something and then you find the thing you're looking for and you just boom, click it and it will focus on it. If you do things quickly and you don't take your time, sometimes you can miss focus and you might miss taking a really good photograph because you haven't, haven't focused properly. Um, sometimes the camera will make a decision for you, especially if it's on an auto setting, for example, like an auto focus setting. But if you're taking, you're starting to get really creative and you want to start taking pictures where you're focusing on different aspects of the frame, just make sure when you bring your camera up that you're finding the right thing you're finding it on your screen and you're pushing it. You're saying, that's what I want to focus on. Make sure the lens is focused on that before you take the picture. That's going to really help you take some really good photographs. 
Um, so that takes us to tip number 10. Well, exposure. So exposure is one of the most important things you can learn about with photography. Um, and that can be a big difference to how your photograph looks, whether it's overexposed or underexposed, if it's dark or it's light, all those kind of things. And actually, smartphones are really easy to use when it comes to exposure. Um, when you do, uh, it depends on what kind of phone you've got, but when you take a picture and say you, you hold it up and you find your thing and you focus on it, you'll see a little thing come up on your screen. It'll either be a plus or a minus, or it might be a little sunscreen when you can push a little thing up and down. And what that essentially is doing is it's increasing and decreasing your exposure. And sometimes, and because ultimately, cameras, camera phones are cameras essentially work the same way. They measure reflective light. And sometimes when they see an image, it can confuse them a little bit. They, they don't have the dynamic range when we're up that our eyes do our eyes are really good at adapting to different light situations and cameras can't do that so sometimes when you bring your camera up to take a picture and you look at it and you think okay it looks a bit dark you'll see a little you'll see a little option somewhere it'll either be a sunscreen or a plus or a minus and you can bump the exposure up and down and then you can see what it looks like in your picture before you take it so if it looks a bit dark and you think you need some more light in there just bump it up or if you think it's overexposed because there's too much light coming in just bump it down a little bit don't be afraid to use that that's a really good way of learning how light works so all good you know exposure that's tip number 10 so uh number 11 well now we're talking about creative tools so we're talking about leading lines and what leading lines are they are compositional elements within your frame um they can go from foreground to a background like a path or a road or a river um and they can be used to help you take really nice creative pictures um they're one of the easiest things you can learn about when you first start taking photographs especially with a phone and you're out and about going for walks and you want to just get your camera out and get a nice a nice uh, a nice picture and so it's a really simple and effective technique uh, and you can you can find for example a path or a river and you can get down low and you can use it to lead you into a photograph so if you find a path that you, you walk in your dog and you see a lovely path and it goes off into some trees you can get down low and take a lovely picture and path leads you into the picture uh, if you start seeing, once you start seeing them, you can't stop seeing them. Uh, you see them absolutely everywhere when you first start taking photographs, but they are a brilliant way to start thinking creatively when you first start taking photographs. So leading lines, you see them all over the place, you'll start seeing them everywhere. So that's tip number 11. And tip number 12, in the last tip, uh, so I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information, but that is experiment with your angles and perspectives. So that means get down low. Uh, don't be afraid to, uh, to, uh, put your phone in things or around things or you know don't be afraid to to lay on your back and take a picture of a tree from below or don't be afraid to you know run around and and use all kinds of things in the front of your lens and behind your lens to take pictures you know don't don't feel like you have to just stand there with your phone at chest height and take photographs because you don't you can get low you can move the camera around you can do all kinds of things you know you've got this lovely little tool in your hands that can do all kinds of different things and the best thing to do is to experiment you know um, and actually you know i always say you know don't be afraid to mess up you know a lot of people got the ideas and they they never really try them because they're too scared of maybe not getting it right but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter the best way to learn and to have fun is to experiment and don't be afraid you know you've got this little camera you can take a thousand pictures on it and it's all good don't be afraid to use it. Get down low, get high, you know, stand on things, do whatever you want. Um, you know, it's all good. Have some fun with it. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to experiment and don't be afraid to try things out because it doesn't matter. That's the best way to learn and be creative. Just embrace it. All the ideas you've got, boom, take them. Do your best to try and figure out how to take them. Happy days. So that is my 12 tips for mobile phone photography. Thank you very much. I'll catch you guys later.